Members of the Board of Education, Dodger, Dr. Batagianis, honored class of 1994, ladies and gentlemen. As I look around the stadium and acknowledge the 287 graduates and the hundreds of friends and relatives that have come to wish them well, I say welcome on this warm, gorgeous Sunday afternoon in early June. Welcome to Mishawaka High School and her 117th commencement program. When faced with the alternative of being confined in the warm, humid gymnasium, it is indeed a pleasure to celebrate this commencement this year for these seniors on Steel Field. We have an exciting afternoon ahead of us and so let us proceed with the program. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce both of our salutatorians, Laura Hildreth, daughter of Jack and Donna Hildreth, and Carrie Stone, daughter of Dennis and Kathleen Stone, who will offer the salutatory addresses.
in class teachers would lecture or give tests and at the end of the day I would go home to my family. Throughout those four years it seemed there was nothing I wanted more than to get to this point to wear this gown and graduate with my class and be able to move on with my life. I was so desperate to put my high school years behind me that I didn't stop to think about all I would be leaving behind. I didn't ask myself, where will I be in the years to come? Will I ever be as simple as being able to walk these halls, blindfolded if necessary, or attend a football game and scream as loud as I could? Looking through my yearbook and seeing your faces, all of this hit home. I asked myself, perhaps you're facing the same uncertainties I am, that the security we've been taking for granted all these years will be swept away as soon as we step onto this stage and accept our diplomas. But walking across this stage is also walking into a new phase in our life. Never have we accomplished something more important. Today marks the surrendering of our old lives and old securities and the beginnings of our future. Our parents know this, so do our teachers and our families. They have come here today to see us start our new lives and perhaps remember, perhaps remember when they started their own. What they hope for us is what we hope for ourselves. That what our future lacks in security, it more than makes up for in excitement and possibilities. And that although our future may be uncertain, it will never be boring or routine. If I had a wish for the class of 1994, it would be that all of you could have the strength and determination to make your own happiness and peace in life. If I had a wish for myself, it would be that somewhere, sometime in my life, I again find friends as true as you have been. You have been my strength and inspiration, and you will forever remain so. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Carrie. Now to introduce the members of the Mishawaka Board of School Trustees. After much deliberation and lengthy consideration, the representatives of the class and the class officers ask me to invite our commencement speaker, Mr. Rick S. Miller. Mr. Miller is a native of Mishawaka. He attended Mary Phillips Elementary and Maine Junior High Schools before attending Mishawaka High School where he participated in football and baseball for four years. He was the junior class vice president and the senior class president before graduating in 1971. He went on to attend Indiana University Bloomington and Indiana University School of Law in Indianapolis. From 1977 to 1979, Mr. Miller was a sheriff's deputy with the St. Joseph County Police Department. From 1981 to 1983, he worked security detail at the governor's mansion in Indianapolis. Currently, Mr. Miller is an agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. His FBI background encompasses over 11 years of professional experience with a thorough knowledge of investigative guidelines covering the FBI classification of criminal offenses. While assigned to the Indianapolis and Dallas offices, his cases involved kidnap matters, extortion, civil rights, bank robbery, and fraud. While signed to the New York City office, he concentrated on foreign Mr. Rick S. Miller. Thank you all. Faculty, graduates, and families. I extend my congratulations to you 1994 graduates of Miss Mishawaka High School for your tremendous achievement. I also extend congratulations to your families for their tremendous sustained achievement. Without their support, their encouragement, and their love, none of us would be where we are today. The lights jolted her awake every morning at 6. From her cot, she watched people in the homeless shelter brace for another day. And then fourth grader Laura Lee Summer would sit up and open her books. Alone with her words, in a vagabond childhood, fatherless and sometimes homeless, 
This was a familiar, comforting place. As she and her mother moved among shelters and welfare hotels in three states, Laura Lee turned to library books for solace. This fall, she'll do her reading at Harvard University, which awarded a full scholarship to the 17-year-old from Quincy High School. In an essay for her college application, she wrote, I learned that wealth is not what I have, rather it is who I am. Being poor, being homeless, having my startled eyes open to only a few. You must be self-motivated, self-reliant. Be about the business of creating something worthwhile in your life. And do not let the fear of failure discourage you from doing what you want to do. Lee Iacocca was fired from Ford by a Ford. I now drive one of Lee Iacocca's visions, something Fortune Magazine recently called Chrysler's Cash Cow, the minivan. Failure makes you go a step higher. Failure gives you strength. Failure drives you to greater success. If you do not meet with failure, you are probably not challenging your abilities. But no matter what you decide to do with your lives, I encourage you, I implore you, to consider sharing your talents with the rest of society, even if it is for only part of your career. P public service seems to be a dying idea. People are more interested in making money than in serving to create a better society. You will be greatly enriched and rewarded by performing some volunteer work using your particular talents. And I encourage you to give of yourself freely to better the community in which you live. You are going to continue to live in the society. Unless you put forth the effort to improve it, you will inevitably pay the price for the choices you have made. But through it all, the only things that really count are the things that happen inside of you. Life is easy when you realize that you control your own destiny, your own future. You must believe in yourself and do the best you can and do not worry about the rest. And do not demand that life must be fair. You must deal with what is, period. Remember, you are greater than you think. You have the ability to change the quality of life. Whatever you are seeking, it is also seeking you. I took a street survival course recently at our training facility. One of the things I learned was to talk positively to myself. You can use this concept also. When you get through a bad situation, or any situation in which your self-confidence is shaken, congratulate yourself. Concentrate on messages like this. I did it. I did it well. I dealt successfully with some tough problems. I can feel more comfortable and work even more smoothly and self-confidently next time. I can control my situation. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, who, speaking before a group such as yourselves, once said, I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth, and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as the basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. Rick, we thank you for your meaningful message and your sharing of some memorable experiences that have highlighted your remarkable career. But most of all, we thank you for taking time from your busy schedule just to be with us on this special day. Surely, everyone here will agree that the tradition of selecting outstanding graduates to address our senior class has been a sound one. Again, we have proven that Mishawaka High School alumni are something special. Thanks, Ray.
of 94 was comprised of 10 members. It was one of the largest that had yet graduated from a public school at that time. It stood well in scholarship, deportment, and it was indeed a credit to this class. The class colors were green and white. The flower was the carnation. Their motto, our harvest is not yet reaped. Their commencement speaker talked and encouraged the class to go out into the world and reap. 50 years later, 1944, Mishawaka High School held its 67th annual commencement program in the gymnasium. That year we graduated 291 students. The entire theme of commencement was very solemn. It was a message of war and the price of victory and what it would take to win the war. Many of those young men that graduated from that class made the ultimate sacrifice. They gave to their country, gave to our country with their lives. Now, another 50 years later, times are much better. And here we are to celebrate with the class of 1994. to you. You're an excellent body of students who are assembled here today. And I would like to leave you with some of the most important teachings of Mishawaka High School. I ask all of you to have a mission that matters. Your life's goal is the core to your success. Be a dream builder. Look beyond the problems to the solutions. Look beyond the obstacles to the opportunities. Look beyond the impossible to the possibilities. And remember that only he who attempts the ridiculous can achieve the impossible. When others doubt you, be courageous. When others quit, demonstrate strength and determination. And whatever you may choose to do with your life, do it better than it's ever been done before. I wish you the very best in all you do. And I would hope that you would always remember good old Mishawaka High School. With this, I invite the class of 1994 to rise. I present you the class of 1994 to the world. The world is at your fingertips, and I entrust in all of you the great responsibility of being its caretaker. Bless you all. Accepting the class of 1994 and responding for the Board of School Trustees is the president of our board, Mr. Emery Petko. Thank you, Mr. Pagoli, Dr. Batagianis, Mr. Miller, members of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Eby, Mr. Kowalski, families and friends of the graduates and the class of 1994. As I was preparing my remarks for today, I found it most difficult to express in a few short words the pride felt by all of us for this group of 287 seniors who graduate today. The class of 1994 has brought considerable distinction, not only to the Mishawaka High School, but to the Mishawaka community. The city of Mishawaka is a great place to live. Many of the city leaders are graduates of Mishawaka High School. And many of you waiting to receive your diplomas today are our leaders of the future. The class of 1994 has distinguished itself in many ways. Academic honors have been numerous. Community values, such as the food drive, continue to grow. And athletic accomplishments have been many. And if you would forgive a personal thought, 
Even though the school year for the seniors is complete, there are seven very special young ladies among the graduates who will bring more honor to Mishawaka High School as they compete in the softball semi-state at Maryville next Saturday. And how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sand pile at Sunday school. These are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. When you go into the world, watch for traffic. Hold hands, stick together. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. The roots go down and the plant goes up and nobody really knows how or why, but we're all like that. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die, so do we. And then remember the Dick and Jane books for the first word you learned, the biggest word of all, look. Everything you need to know is in there somewhere. The golden rule and love and basic sanitation. Ecology and politics and equality and sane living. Take any of these items and extrapolate it into sophisticated adult terms and apply it to your family life or your work or your government or your world and it holds true and clear and firm. Think what a better world it would be if we, the whole world, had cookies and milk about three o'clock every afternoon and then lay down with our blankies to take a nap. Or if all the governments had as a basic policy, always put things back where you find them and clean up your own mess. It is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. Apparently, the class of 1994 learned these lessons well. As an example, I would like to read a poem from the Browse, which is a collection of writings by Mishawaka High School students. The author of this poem is a classmate of yours, a graduate of this class. The title of the poem, An End to the Hunger. There is a hunger that is spread over the land. It is a desire to love one another and to reach out a helping hand. There is a craving for hope in everyone's heart, a dream that we can all come together as brothers, and a wish puts each of us right at the start. Another request is that of peace, but the war of differences is too powerful, and we cannot become one until we cease. This hunger will never stop if we just keep it a dream, the gift to give the world would be for everyone to work as a team. The author, Tara Yates. The class of 1994. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Petko. The class at this time may be seated as we prepare to announce the names of the graduating seniors. Laura Marie Hildreth. Carrie Lindsay Stone. Sarah Michelle Unruh.
Jennifer L. Wawicki. <laughs> Carrie Lynn Stebbins. <laughs> Holly D. Armstrong. <laughs> Lori Ann Carnes. Suzanne Lynn Sikowski. <laughs> Babel. <laughs> Dawn L. Valentine. <laughs> Michael John Belting. <laughs> Tanya Ann. William Henry Bershevsky. Aaron Michael Burris. Chad L. Butchko. Ann Culver. Katrina Ann Cutberth. Lisa Marie Donald. Amy Ann DeBroca. Ryan Matthew Decker. Timothy James DeCook. Eric John Demeter. Jennifer Lynn DeMillinaire. <laughs> Jessica Lee Densmore. <laughs> Brad M. DeVault. <laughs> Kelly Ray Diaper. <laughs> Scott Brian Dozel. Katina Janelle Drake. Kara Christine Dragons. Amy Lynn Duvall. Susan A. Dyer. Seth W. Easterday. Treff Suzanne Edelman. Sabrina Ellenberger. Theodore Anthony Klasinski Eli. Tammy Michelle. John Evans. Tom Evans, Jr. Laura C. Fleming. Jason Fowler. Jessica Tenille Fozo. Leonard C. Franklin. Jennifer Joe Free. Monty Alonzo Fries. Tracy Lynn Fritz. Michael Scott Garrett. Mary McLean Gorney. Kevin Lawrence Greatless. Kareem Goldia Renner. Carla Michelle Hall. 
Kimberly Ann Holderman. Susan K. Johns Derrickson. Patrick O. Kaiser. Pamela Jean Craigle. Scott Joseph Kring. Labonte. Angela Marie LaFuchsia. Sean T. Lang. Daniel Thomas Lewecki. Jennifer Malkowitz. Julie D. Marshall. William P. Amy Irene Mestock. Jason Patrick Metcalf. Christopher L. Maluski. Robert J. Modis. Regina L. Monar. Jeremy Michael Padgett. Frank S. Piano. Stephanie Lynn Pemberton. Wendy Michelle Perez. Pittenger. Jeremiah David Pittman. Cynthia Joy Porter. Michael L. Kiros. Christine Diane Redmond. Michael K. Redmond. Katie Lynn Robinson. Donald Benjamin Rosenbaum. Michelle Lynn Rozo. Rachel Leela Ruley. Michael John Rupchak. Jeffrey Michael Sabi. Juan A. Salamanca. Randa Marie Shield. Jessica Lynn Schroff. Jessica Lynn Signorino. Kimberly Ann Zimmerman. Jamie Simus. David Smith. Jared David Smith. Vera Sosa. <laughs> Tiffany Marie Saul. David Joseph Vorty. Van T. Vu. Joseph Wiesner. Danielle Marie Wilder. Beth Renee 
Wood. Jason D. Wright. Tara Denise Yates. Christopher Allen Young. Michelle Lee Young. Michael A. Youngs. And Christine Sender. responding well to taking that beach ball away. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank these people. I'd like to thank Dr. Batagianis and the School Board of Trustees, our commencement speaker, Rick Miller, our students who, who spoke or who will speak, David Bodorf, Richard Shoesmith, Laura Hildreth, Carrie Stone, administrators that helped out, Mr. Eby and Mr. Tobalski, for their contributions today. I would also like to thank Mr. Cecil and Mr. Long. You and your talented musical groups are to be commended for your fine performances. In keeping with another tradition established more than 60 years ago, I'd like to thank the four outstanding juniors who assisted with commencement today. Both individuals who led the processional, Lee Gill and Don Heron. Both young men who acted as ushers, Todd D. Cook and Jeremy Miller. Thank you all. Our commencement program will conclude with two final addresses. Our valedictory addresses this afternoon, and those will be presented by our co valedictorians, David Bodorf, son of Richard and Sheila Bodorf, and Richard Shoesmith, son of Bernard and Barbara Shoesmith. At this time, if we could have David and Richard. You know something? As I look out upon this crowd of 287 seniors sitting there in their maroon and white gowns, one issue stands out in my mind which I feel needs to be addressed. What's up with these hats? <laughs> up with the idea to put a square piece of cardboard on somebody's beanie. <laughs> well, regardless of their origins, these hats have come to be a symbol. A symbol of celebration. So, I think it's only appropriate that today I speak a little bit about celebration. After all, that's what we're here for, isn't it? To celebrate? To throw a big old party because we managed to get through four years of high school and live to tell the tale? That's what I was led to believe anyway. Okay. We are here in order to celebrate a very special moment in our lives and in our families' lives. We are now Mishawaka High School graduates. But 
But we shouldn't stop celebrating as soon as this ceremony is over. Or even as soon as this day is over. I know some people are planning to make celebration their primary objective for the rest of the week. But I'm not talking about celebrating a specific event or occasion. I'm talking about like, celebrating every single day of your life. Celebrate just because you're alive, because you can run or sing or read or breathe. Celebrate the perfect blue of a summer sky. Celebrate the fact that you've learned something new or the cool feel of a breeze through your hair, although we could probably do with a little less of that today. You don't need a special reason. You don't need a cause. living. Take a walk, hug a friend, tell a joke. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just make every day as special in its own way as today is. Make everything you do as full of excitement and anticipation, and you'll be surprised at how fulfilling life can be. When everything you do is a celebration of life, you discover that your life suddenly becomes a celebration. It's not always easy to do, but it's worth it. And to anyone who at least tries, my hat's off to you. Congratulations, class of 94. Good luck! service earlier this morning, but if you didn't go, you missed excellent service. A lot of work went into that, and I think it shows a lot about the character and integrity, and a lot about the priorities of this class. <laughs> to class of 1994, I only have one thing to say. Good luck, and God bless you all.
Having another one? What? Ask him. No, I'm not going to ask him. You got to do it. <laughs> you want it, you got to do it. <laughs> Uh, there's a table. I don't know. No, I don't. Where's the? He's got 15. He has 15.